Welcome everybody to Universal Studios Florida, where Mardi Gras has ended and the background music has returned. My name is Jake with the Theme Park Shark, and today we're going to take a look around and see everything that's new at the park. So, let's dive right in. So majestic, that beautiful arch with the amazing background music. Gotta love it. I do wish they played the Ghostbusters soundtrack out here because, you know, when you get into a car crash, who are you going to call? Morgan & Morgan! Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. Servicing over 49 states and they have 800 plus lawyers. If you ever need some sort of lawyer for a car crash, injury, whatever you need, Morgan & Morgan is there for you. Injured and don't know where to start? With Morgan & Morgan, it's so easy. With Morgan & Morgan, you can submit a claim without ever having to leave the couch. In eight clicks or less, you can submit a claim to Morgan & Morgan. Size does matter. Pound Law. Morgan & Morgan for the people. For the people. Our first update could be found here right at the park entrance. They previously tore down, totally demolished this uh, turnstile entrance area, but now it is back. Check that out. Brand new ticket turnstile building right here. They have a new roof on there. The whole structure is built from the ground up new. Now based off the looks of it, it is very similar to what it replaced. But it's nice to have a brand new ticket turnstile that will be opening in the near future here outside of Universal Studios Florida. Immediately entering the park, construction walls have been removed, revealing a brand new snack stand along with a wait time tip board. And I gotta love the snack stand. The theming is beautiful. It matches the building behind it. It has a nice, uh, nice art deco look to it. Really nice upgrade over here. Here we can see how this wait time tip board is beautifully integrated into the landscape. Before it was just kind of sitting on top of a flower bed. And look at this. This is majestic. It has that awesome old school art deco look. And even look at the countertop. The countertop's even themed. Really nice work here. Directly next to that snack stand is Despicable Me Minion Mayhem. And the facade of this attraction is currently under refurbishment. They have the whole thing uh, tarped off here, giving it some much needed love before the debut of this so-called Minion Land that's coming to the park. On this little villain mobile deal, we can see that they have a towel covering the top of it, protecting it from any falling debris or construction mishaps that could occur. But overall, they're giving Minion Mayhem some uh, TLC. Since we were last here, the facade of VillainCon Minion Blast has been completed. Check that out. All those posters are installed. The painting down here appears to be finished. They have that black trim going around the entire yellow part. But this is VillainCon. The marquee entrance sign is nearing completion here at the bottom. It looks like they added the base of the V beneath Minion Blast and they're awaiting to add that orange uh, paneling to it. But that's the uh, entrance for the attraction. And here are all the posters. I like how it says Universal Studios welcomes the Vicious Six. And it has all those villains here. As we continue past VillainCon here, we can see the Minion Cafe. And wow, these facades are really coming together. Take a look at this. We have this one facade that kind of busts out here over the road. We have the bricks. We have this Art Deco looking uh, archway going on. This facade here is going to turn out really nice looking. And the brickwork is awesome. And there's also poles on top of this for some sort of signage. So it'll be interesting to see what comes over here. Looking down the plaza of the Stars Road, we have a nice look at what will be Minions Land. All the way down to this part of the Minions Cafe. These facades are coming along nicely. Very fast progress here. Across the road from Minions Cafe, they are doing some work. So one of these snack stands at the Music Plaza area. They recently uh, put up these construction walls last night. And look, they have minions all over the walls. But I'm real curious as to what's going on here. We could see that they are demolishing some of this Art Deco theming along the sides of it. Which is interesting because they just added that Art Deco theming to the front of the park. And there's two more buildings here. One right here and one to the far left that have that same Art Deco style along with the stage itself in the middle. So I'm not sure if they're going to demolish this building, which I doubt. Um, but maybe they are adding minion theming to it, which would be quite unfortunate because it's in the music plaza area. But time will tell. Maybe they're just giving it some uh, needed refurbishment. The way they set up these construction walls is that it still gives the show techs and entertainment techs access to this ladder here so they can access the roof where they have some of their equipment up there. So that leads me to believe that they are not going to tear down this building, rather just remodel it. 
the entertainment team Zuzi's Buildings to run and operate and execute all of their shows that they put on here at the Music Plaza stage. You know, I really messed up today by wearing a hoodie because it is hot out. In the New York section of the park, they are continuing their set enhancements of replacing these facades back here. As we can see, they have the uh, New York Library facade stripped down and they're going to be replacing it. And soon it'll look nice and beautiful like this one here. This one is brand new and boy does it look good. All of the Mardi Gras food booths have been removed from this area of the park and it just feels so much more open and spacious. They have a fairly new dance show here in the New York section of the park. Just past Diagon Alley here near this bridge where the uh, old Jaws Ride bathrooms are and the Jaws Ride food stand. The Jaws Ride area loop has returned to these speakers. It was gone for a little bit due to Mardi Gras, but now that good old Amity Island music is back. Right now the volume is really low, but it comes out of this speaker. It comes out of the speakers around the bathroom. And it comes out of this speaker. I must look insane to everybody. I'm out here literally filming a speaker. <laughs> I'm in danger! I'm here outside of the former Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone and the Animal Actors Show is about to start. So we're going to go in there and see if we can get a look at any of the uh, construction going on inside of the old Kid Zone area. Over here from the top of Animal Actors, we can see they've removed all of the pavement from around the E.T. Adventure entrance, all of the landscaping, everything. Even from E.T.'s toy closet, it's all been dug up. Now we could expect them to build a new, maybe not a new entrance, but definitely new area around the entrance. This is crazy, look at that. E.T. surrounded by dirt. And what looks like to be a plumbing truck sucking uh, some stuff out of the ground. We get a nice view of the entire construction site. But actually we cannot see farther back there where all of the new attractions are going. We could just see this entrance area and E.T. I'm not sure how well you guys could see it, but they've added plywood boxes around the footers of Woody Woodpecker's Nuthouse Coaster. And while the E.T. gift shop is temporarily closed, they've moved all of the E.T. merchandise out here into the rotunda area outside of Animal Actors, Spongebob, and E.T. So all the E.T. merchandise can be found right out here on the main walkway. As we come back here towards E.T., we're going to have some major changes. They've actually closed off the main entrance and the gift shop of the ride as they are working on the surrounding kid zone replacement. We're going right outside. All right, now we go right into the pre-show room. And there's currently no pre-show playing. You just walk straight in. Jake. Yep. Thank you. One thing to take note of here is that there was a, uh, a tech booth, an audio booth, right here up against this wall that they used for the shows in Kid Zone, and they just recently removed that when they uh, opened up this as the ET entrance. So rest in peace to the Kid Zone sound booth. Now we're down by the water here at the Universal Studios Florida Lagoon and you're looking at this platform that used to house all of the fountains and some of the fireworks for the uh, cinematic celebration nighttime show. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to tell us that every single piece of this equipment has been removed. Now we're just looking at an empty platform with no show equipment on it and I gotta say I'm shocked. I thought they were gonna reuse the fountain system but uh it appears they are replacing it with something new, so time will tell what they're going to install. The Mardi Gras tribute store is all closed up. There's no signs left of anything that was here. There's white curtains in the windows. I guess we're going to see if they're going to build a summer tribute store here. And now lastly, here on our way out of the park, we can see that the Red Coconut Club has been stripped of its Cursed Coconut Club theming. It is back to normal. And now looking through the windows, I could see that the inside is also just regular Red Coconut Club. It's going to be interesting to see if this summer, are they going to add a new theme to the Red Coconut? Or will it just reopen as a regular Red Coconut Club? 
the Cursed Coconut Club is closed after its seasonal overlay for uh, Universal's Mardi Gras celebration. That's going to wrap up our day here at Universal Orlando Resort. We hope to catch you next time.